There are three interrelated arguments used by today's conservatives to justify capitalism, which can best be designated as the argument from faith, the argument from tradition, the argument from depravity. Sensing their need of a moral base, many conservatives decided to choose religion as their moral justification. They are claiming that freedom, capitalism, and America are based on faith in God. Politically, such a claim contradicts the fundamental principles of the United States. In America, religion is a private matter and must not be brought into political issues. Intellectually, to rest one's case on faith is to concede that reason is on the side of one's enemies, to concede that there are no rational arguments to support the ideas which created this country, no rational justification for freedom, justice, property, individual rights, and they, they can be accepted only on faith. Consider the implications of that attempt. While the communists are claiming that they are the champions of reason and science, the conservatives concede it and retreat into the realm of mysticism, into another world, surrendering this world to communism. It is the kind of victories that communist irrational ideology could never have won on its own merits. Now consider a second argument the attempt to justify capitalism on the ground of tradition. Some people declare that to be a conservative means to uphold the status quo, the given, the established, regardless of what it might be, regardless of whether it is good or bad, right or wrong, defensible or indefensible. They declare that we must defend the American political system not because it is right, but because our ancestors chose it. Not because it is good, but because it is old. America was created by men who broke with all political traditions and originated a system unprecedented in history, relying on nothing but the power of their own intellect. But those neoconservatives are now trying to tell us that America was the product of faith in revealed truth and of uncritical respect for the traditions of the past. It is certainly irrational to use the new as a standard of value, to believe that an idea or a policy is good merely because it is new. But it is much more preposterously irrational to use the old as a standard of value, to claim that an idea or a policy is good merely because it is ancient. The liberals are constantly asserting that they represent the future, that they are new, progressive, forward-looking, etc. And they denounce the conservatives as old-fashioned representatives of a dead past. The conservatives conceded and thus helped the liberals to pro propagate one of today's most grotesque contradictions. Collectivism and dictatorship, the frozen status society, is offered to us in the name of progress, while capitalism, the only free, dynamic, creative society ever devised, is defended in the name of passivity and stagnation. The plea to preserve tradition as such appeals to the worst elements in men and rejects the best. It appeals to fear, cowardice, conformity, self-doubt, and rejects creativeness, originality, independence, self-reliance. It is an outrageous plea to address to human beings anywhere, but the more outrageous here, in America, the country based on the principle that man must stand on his own feet, live by his own judgment, and move constantly forward as a productive, creative innovator. This leads us to the third and the worst, argument of some alleged conservatives, the attempt to defend freedom on the ground of man's depravity. This argument runs as follows. Since men are weak, 
infallible, non-omniscient, and innately depraved, no man may be entrusted with the responsibility of being a dictator and of ruling everybody else. Therefore, a free society is the proper way of life for imperfect creatures. Since men are depraved, they are not good enough for a dictatorship. Freedom is all that they deserve. If they were perfect, they would be worthy of a totalitarian state. Dictatorship, this school asserts, believe it or not, is the result of faith in man and in man's goodness. If people realize that man is depraved by nature, they would not entrust a dictator with power. The belief in human depravity is what would protect their freedom. And more. Dictatorships, this school declares, and all the other disasters of the modern world are man's punishment for the sin of relying on his intellect and of attempting to improve his life on earth by seeking a perfect political system and a rational society. Thus humility, passivity, resignation, and belief in original sin are the bulwarks of capitalism. This is truly the voice of the dark ages rising again in the midst of our industrial civilization. The liberals are trying to put statism over by stealth without letting the country realize what road they are taking to what ultimate goal. And while such a policy is reprehensible, there is something much more reprehensible. The policy of the so-called conservatives who believe in compromise and who are trying to defend freedom by stealth. If the liberals are afraid to identify their program by its proper name, if they advocate every specific step, measure, policy, and principle of statism, but squirm and twist themselves into semantic pretzels with such euphemisms as the welfare state, the New Deal, the New Frontier, they still preserve a semblance of logic, if not of morality. It is the logic of a con man who cannot afford to let his victims discover his purpose. Besides, most liberals are afraid to let themselves discover that what they, that what they advocate is statism. They do not want to know or to admit that they are the champions of dictatorship and slavery. So they evade the issue for fear of discovering that their goal is evil. Immoral as this might be, what is one to think of men who evade the issue for fear of discovering that their goal is good? What is the moral stature of those who are afraid to know or to proclaim that they are the champions of freedom? What is the courage and the integrity of those who outdo their enemies in smearing, misrepresenting, spitting at and apologizing for their own ideals? What is the rationality of those who expect to trick people into freedom, cheat them into justice, pull them into progress, con them into preserving their rights, and while indoctrinating them with statism, put one over on, on them and let them wake up in a perfect capitalist society some morning. Such, unfortunately, are a great many of today's conservatives. Gentlemen, if you want to save capitalism, there is only one type of argument that you should adopt, the only one that has ever won in any moral issue, the argument from self-esteem. Check your premises, convince yourself of the rightness of your cause, then fight for capitalism with full moral certainty. <laughs>